Hey, this is Bear Hill Shire. We are doing today some Aramex egg uh, shield building, targs, specifically for Squire Hunter Warner. Say hi. Hey. And uh, we picked up some materials from Menards. Cost anywhere between 50 and 25 bucks, depending on how you want to do it. Uh, the more thicker woods, the more uh, expensive edging handles, you're going to go up closer to 50. We got pretty close to that today. And what we have here is a, it's a pine, sorry, a oak, half inch piece of plywood that's uh, two feet by two feet. A little bit short. We have some rubber hosing here. It's vinyl hosing. Uh, you can tell it's about eighth inch thick, a little bit more, about three sixteenths. We've got a handle, we've got a buckle. So the handle is basically a gate handle, and the buckle is a dog collar. We also have some safety foam right here, which we're using for the back of the shield for the size. What he's doing right now is he's marking center on the board, and then we're going to take a string and a pencil and we're going to draw a circle around it. Okay, so what we did is we marked center, we put a nail in here. Uh, it's just an old belt that we popped a hole in the end. He's going to put the pencil in there. He's going to keep the belt tight and he's going to go all the way around. We've got a circle drawn there. Okay. We're going to use a regular jigsaw with a regular all-purpose blade. Sound protection is a must, folks. You really want to do that. This is the handle that I'm going to use for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make risers. Because right now it's really hard to grab this. I'm putting my hand under there, so I want to have this up higher. So I'm just going to use some of the scrap here that we're going to cut out. And I'm going to cut two little tabs that are going to go under this handle so that we can use those as extras. And since we're cutting things out, it's a lot easier to do it right now before I cut out the rest of it. Round now. As you can see, we've got some flats here and Rather than go with a smaller circle, Hunter wanted to do flats on the sides, which is fine. Uh, the next thing is to lay out the handle, the strap, and then last we would put on this. Uh, you don't really have to sand this down because this is going to get covered by the, by the tubing here. But if the tubing's covering it, the air fridges aren't going to matter, you're not going to see them. Uh, any kind of painting or decoration you want to do while it's flat like this as a board, uh, Putting the tubing on makes it kind of hard to paint it. Uh, you really don't want to paint the plastic vinyl stuff. It doesn't hold paint very well. That's why we went with black. So what we're going to now is we're going to use the whole side as the back side. And he's going to figure out that's about where he wants everything. Usually you want it centered. That's right in the middle of the dot. What you're really trying to figure out is where it's comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. Some people want to have more shield up front away from their hand. So like that way a little bit. So that the center's more nice nah, too far back. Right there. So next we're gonna screw everything down. Okay, so what we did was we took our, our risers and we popped some pilot holes in there so that they don't split. And then we've got these sheet metal screws that we're going to use for putting these down. Um, we don't want to go through the front of the shield. We've got these for the straps that will hold the belt buckle down. And then these are the screws that came with the handle to screw that down. Hunter's marked the handle spots where he wants them to go on the board there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these risers here on the outsides or the insides. Make sure everything lines up. Make sure we don't have any hole conflicts. And we're going to screw these down. Right. 
So I'm going to take these sheet screws here. If you do not pilot hole drill these, they will split. So just kind of word of the wise. And again, never hurts to check twice before you put something down. So once it's screwed down, it's screwed down. Now we want to make sure that everything's not poking out the back. So if we pick the shield up, we got nothing there, which is great. That's what we're going for. It just looks nice. You don't have to grind down screws and rivets on the front side of the shield. And here again, I'm going to pre-drill these because otherwise there's a good chance that wood's going to split. I'm just going to hold that down nice and tight for me. Could go with pine, uh, real soft wood like that though, you're going to get a lot of dents and a lot of nicks and it might break on you. So I would say oak, walnut, probably your best bets. Buckle right in the middle of your arm. Okay. No, don't move the buckle. Okay, let go. So he's going to hold that down, so we're going to leave that there, and we're going to use these screws here with a washer to go right through the leather, right into the wood. Don't worry about this pop-up screws here because we're going to be padding on the top of this. So we're going to cut this off, cut that off, and we're going to go here, back to about there, and that you basically just tape down. Double sided tape, some glue, stuff will last forever. This is the final placement of the foam that we put in there, and if you can see it here, there's a screw here, screw there, there, there. We didn't use washers, it didn't really need it, and then two more there. And the reason that I did this is that if you put a lot of force here, it tends to rip the foam up. So if you're getting jerked around a lot, you want to make sure that you've got that screw here holding the leather down, two on each side, one here. Now, the tape and the wood glue will keep this down pretty much forever. It's not going to come off at all. And as you can see, that shield versus this shield designs are a little bit different. So one we kind of were trying out a different way to do it, and that's where we would do the over here. Now, if the strap breaks, this is a lot easier to, to fix. Uh, this is just a lot more solid in general, and it's really not going to go anywhere. So I guess it depends on how you want to do it. There's always different kinds of designs. This is just a basic dog pop collar plastic buckle this is a more expensive leather steel outfit this has the canvas on it and that's why we went this because you can't really screw this stuff down it'll just rip right out with the leather you can so just the different options in the buckles and the back sides of the shield there now if he tries it out At this point, he's going to do a sigil on the front, which will probably wood burn in. Okay, so what Hunter did was he took a picture offline that he wanted to put on there as his sigil. And it's a yin-yang tree symbol. Hard to see there. But uh, basically what it is is a printout from MS Paint. Then I took some carbon paper and we stapled it to the back of this. And this is just, if you put a mark there, you can see it'll leave a mark on 
whatever surface is behind it. There's a mark I just did with my fingernail. And then we just put that on the shield and just transferred it out. Hunter does have some pretty intricate designs here. And as you can see, it's taken a lot of work just to get that transfer on there. And all you really do is you take the paper, you put it face down with the carbon paper, and you just pen over it, and that'll put the marks on there. All we do with this is we split it down the middle with a knife, and you nail it on all the way around the edge. I wanted to talk about shield edging, since we're not going to be able to show that in this video right here. The shield edging specifically that he's going to use is going to be the vinyl. This is garden hose, okay, which is just basically split down the middle, and we used uh, carpet tacks, upholstery tacks to put that on there with some glue. So there's uh, a caulk bead under this, and then we went around, and as you can see here, it's taking some good hits. Okay, right there. Some people use rawhide, so they'll take a dog chewy bone, they'll boil it, and they'll cut it in strips, put it around the edges. When you open up MS Paint, you want to go up to the top where the little drop-down box is. That gives you more options. You want to go to the Print option, and then you want to go to Page Setup. Once you're in the Page Setup, you're going to want to choose on the bottom in the Scaling section, fit to however many pages you want. Two by two pages will give you a design that's generally about 20 inches across, maybe 15. I think this design is about 15 inches. So that's how you print it. And then all we did was just, uh, when it printed out, we cut out the edges of the margins that don't show up, that, that cut off. So, and then we taped it all together and stapled it to the carbon paper. You can get carbon paper from pretty much anywhere. 